Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Sometimes equipment fails and troubleshooting what's wrong with it can be tricky. In this Axe from the Grave episode, we're going to look at a gold foil pickup sent in to me by a very special guest. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching CS Guitars. <laughs> you might know me from my own YouTube channel. It's called 60 Cycle Hum. You might not know me. That's fine too. But anyways, a while back I did a video where I had installed this vintage gold foil into the bridge position of my Strat and it sounded 100% objectively terrible. Literally the worst sounding pickup I've ever heard in my life. It sounded worse than a pickup that just doesn't pass signal at all. <laughs> That's how bad it sounded. It was thin and low output and like gritty, like it was distorting by itself. It sounded like the most out of phase pickup you can imagine times a thousand. So anyways, at the end of the video, I was like, hey, if anyone is interested in this pickup, make me an offer, maybe I'll sell it to you. Colin hit me up. He made me a very generous offer. He made an offer basically at the price of one of these pickups in working condition. And then he was like, I'd love to check it out, to spend some time figuring out the science of why it sounds so bad. Because of course, that's what Colin does. He figures out the science of things. So I'm sitting there like, this guy thinks that I'm just gonna sell a pickup to a competing YouTube channel so you can make content with it? I don't think so. I'm gonna give it to him. Colin, you silly goose. I'm not gonna sell you a pickup so you can make content. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> I'm gonna let him pay the cost of shipping because you know, it's going a long way. International shipping is expensive. Now I've already opened this package and taken a quick look at what was inside and it took me a little less than 60 seconds perhaps to form a hypothesis on what I think is the issue with this pickup. But I don't want to spoil that for you right now. I want to take you through the troubleshooting process from the start to show you my thought process on this beginning with Ryan's video. Here is that gold foil. <laughs> Something's got to be wrong, right? Yeah, absolutely. Something's very not right with that pickup. It almost has this super fast, like, tremolo thing going yeah, on. Yeah, there's an oscillation. I'm wondering, like, if, if the wines on the pickup are, like, vibrating around and causing that weird sound. So there's clearly something wrong here. The sounds Ryan is getting out of this pickup are incredibly weak. There's um, almost a double noting effect happening in places, which might be coming from how close he's got the pickup to the strings, but it might be from the pickup itself. There's also a weird buzzing oscillation, which Ryan describes as almost like a tremolo effect, and that's very bizarre as well. And it almost sounds like the pickup itself is out of phase, but as Ryan correctly points out in the video, that's not possible. This is a single coil pickup and for it to be out of phase, it would have to be connected in conjunction with another coil which is wired in reverse. It can't be out of phase with itself, it's only the one coil, doesn't matter which way you put it around, if it's only one coil, it on a phasing issue only occurs when you're putting two coils in conjunction with each other. So it can't be a coil issue. Ryan also told me he managed to figure out what the problem was and correct it. He deliberately hasn't told me what that issue was because he says he's put it back to its original incorrect state and wants to see how quickly I can figure out the problem. Which tells me that there's nothing fundamentally broken about this pickup. Whatever the fix is, whatever's wrong with it, it can be easily corrected and reversed. So let's take a closer look at the pickup and see what we can determine about it. This is a cheap gold foil. Now gold foil is a general catch-all term for any number of pickups that feature these kind of design aesthetics where you've got a gold foil under some sort of fenestrated cover. It's supposed to be a decorative term rather than one that describes any specific style of construction. In fact, there are lots of different styles of construction and different styles of gold foils. This is only one example of what a gold foil could be. 
Turning this over, we can see that it's not only missing a back plate, but it's also of a fairly normal construction, especially for gold foils. We can see that the coil is wound to a plastic bobbin in the centre. The pole pieces are screwed through a bent steel core, which is holding the cover uh, to the unit. In fact, they're holding the entire thing in place. The cover, the coil and the steel core are all being held together by those pole piece screws. The gold foil itself appears to be some sort of cloth or fabric material um, with this gold layer on the front. Now, in gold foils, this can be made from a bunch of different materials. You often see it on like uh, card or paper, sort of what you'd find on a really tacky decorative um, greetings card with a gold foil on it. Or sometimes you'll see it as um, a thin anodized aluminium uh, sheet with a gold anodization on it, but in this case we've definitely got some sort of cloth or fabric. Now most pivotally for us we have two ceramic bar magnets on either side of the coil and they aren't attached very firmly to the unit at all. In fact, these can very readily just be pulled out of the unit and I think that may be where our issue lies. Now these magnets should be arranged in the same fashion we see them in a P90, with like poles facing each other. So that's you know north to north or south to south, so that the pole pieces have a very defined magnetic direction. However, if these magnets for any reason have fallen out or been taken out of the unit and then been put back in again without taking consideration of what magnetic orientation they should be in, then that would, in theory, produce the sort of sounds that Ryan has been getting in his demo, where we get this very thin sound, this almost out of phase sound. Without a strong, defined magnetic direction for the pole pieces, you would indeed get a very weak signal, which is what we heard in those demos from Ryan. But not only that, if you've got two magnets that are conflicting with each other, then as the strings move above here and interact with the magnetic field and the current that's induced in the coil may be conflicting with itself and that would give us those sort of out of phase sounds that might give us those sort of oscillations that we're hearing. So let's just confirm that theory. Now you can see that on uh, the back of this, on the back steel core, there is some uh, tape residue on either side here. Uh, but there's obviously been a piece of tape across here at some point to hold the magnets in, which is no longer there, it's perished over time. But I don't see any matching tape residue on the ceramic magnet bars. Um, so perhaps it's on one of the other faces of the magnet. If I pull this magnet out, for example, and give it a little turn, there we can see this side of the magnet not only has a little white dot on it, which may indicate this is the right side up, but we also see the same tape residue, adhesive residue on the magnet and it lines up perfectly with the tape residue on the steel core. So I would guess that this is now in the correct orientation for this magnet and we'd have to find the same for the second magnet and we'll check that with our compass and make sure we've got a magnetic field that's making sense. Uh, so that's probably what it was physically looking at it, that looks like what it was. We'll check it magnetically to see as well. Uh, but before we put it all together and, and check everything out, I want to pull the whole thing apart because this needs a clean up uh, and I'd like to address these really short, really rubbishy wires that are on here. We can do better than that. So I'd like to give this pickup a little bit of a refurb, uh, a little refresh before we put it all back together and test it. But uh, we'll make sure that the magnets are in the right orientation and that the coil is working properly in that process.
The gold foil is now installed in the Friedman Vintage T. The screws were just long enough to make purchase to the wood beneath, so I've also got some tape on there to hold the pickup at the right height for testing. Everything cleaned up well, with the slight exception of that gold cloth itself. It's all very clean now, but whatever that gunk and dirt was, it happened to lift the gold colouring away with it, which is unfortunate. I'll probably try to find another piece of gold fabric that's similar to replace this with in the future. I've reinstated the ground wire on the steel core, so now the cover and all the other metal parts are electrically grounded. I've also got the magnets flipped back to the correct magnetic orientation. I plan at some point to come back and make a proper base plate for this so the magnets can never fall back out again, but this will do for now. One last thing about this pickup that became very clear after taking everything apart is that the coil in here has never been wax potted. The outer coils are free to move and there was even some loose loops hanging out beyond the old tape. That means that this pickup will be microphonic, something that Ryan effectively demonstrated in his video and I will aim to replicate here. But before we go any further, let's just check that Ryan's fix was the same as mine. I think I've already solved it. When I was removing it from the strat, I was taking a good hard look at it and thinking about all the comments that I got. So I was thinking, maybe one of these magnets fell out at some point during, you know, previous ownership and the person put it in the wrong way and that's what's causing all these problems. My initial suspicion was that the poles are north to south across the length of this. So I flipped it over. Nope, still sounds terrible. The next thing I tried, which doesn't make any sense to me at all, by the way, this is the part where I want Colin to explain the science of this. The next thing I tried was rotating it this direction. Oh, there it is. That is a normal sounding pickup. It's really weird playing guitar this way. It sounds totally normal now. It actually sounds kind of good too. I'm really excited to do this, you know, collaborative content with Colin. I really want to know like the process he goes through to figure out what's wrong with this thing. I want him to explain the science of why that magnet fixed this when I rotated it that way instead of that way. Cause that's not, I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I don't have any PhDs, but in my mind, the poles of a magnet north and south would always be on the extreme ends of it. Rotating it doesn't make any sense to me. Fucking magnets, how do they work? Ryan made the assumption here that the magnetic bars in this pickup would have their poles at the extreme ends of the long bar and when flipped like this, that would also flip the polarity. This is of course incorrect. The magnets that are used in guitar pickups have their poles orientated in this arrangement, meaning that flipping it end to end doesn't change the magnetic polarity. However, by rotating it about its long axis by 90 degrees as Ryan did, then we can get the North Pole to face in four different directions. This gives us 16 different combinations of how these two magnets can be orientated within this pickup and only two of those combinations will have the pickup working in its optimal fashion. We need both of the magnets to have a like pole facing the pole pieces, so either north to north or south to south. Either of those arrangements will see the pickup working correctly on its own, but when placing this pickup into a guitar with other pickups, then the magnetic polarity and the direction of the coil will determine whether this pickup is in or out of phase with the other pickups in the guitar. So why do we have to have the magnets facing each other to get this to work? Well, we want the pole pieces to have a single defined magnetic direction. Effectively, the pole pieces need to become the north face of the magnet. This is so that when the string moves in one direction within that magnetic field, then it induces a current in the coil moving in one direction. And when the string moves back in the other direction within the magnetic field, this induces a current in the coil moving in the other direction. A guitar signal is an AC signal with the oscillating string being represented by an oscillating current in the coil. 
However, if the magnets were facing in the wrong or random orientations, then you wouldn't get a singular defined magnetic pole at the pole pieces. You'd get a bit of a mix. This would prevent the pickup from sensing the strings very strongly, so you get a very weak signal, if anything at all, and as the string moved in one direction across the field, it would induce currents perhaps going in both directions at once, causing cancellations. And I think that accounts for many of the weirder effects that we're hearing in Ryan's demonstrations. The only thing that's left, I suppose, is for you to hear how this pickup would sound with the magnets orientated correctly. <laughs> When working properly, this gold foil actually sounds pretty good. It's certainly darker and has less dynamic range than the P90s that were in this guitar, but under the correct circumstances, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I've had a lot of fun messing around with it, and hopefully Ryan will be pleased with my investigation. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud, and stay safe. Gold, there be gold, there be.